I'm Shannon. I'm a photo and video artist living and working in Brooklyn. And my thesis project is called Coupling. Coupling is a 103-page book of personal text and photography that documents my relationship with my partner during a particularly tumultuous period of living together. It takes place right after I moved to New York City, and the loneliness of the city juxtaposes with the close intimacy felt at home. Coupling grew out of this need to document and understand the forces shaping my life at that time, as well as in my past. My life has changed at such a rapid fire pace over the last 10 years that photography has been a way to cope with feeling out of control. Photographs become a record of my personal truth. Here they say, this is what really happened. Be my witness. My mentor, the photographer Eleanor Carucci, and my partner came into my month, life in the same month, forever changing me in numerous ways. This is some of the work of my mentor. I had originally pitched a short film for my thesis about a personal subject matter with what ultimately I flat, felt were flat characters. I came to my mentor last fall totally overwhelmed by the scope of the project, and she brought me back to my roots. She said, shoot everything every day. And I had an explosion of creativity uh, and started shooting both videos and stills. And I began to see patterns, reoccurring themes, colors, surroundings, people. I remembered the work of my idols, Sally Mann, Nan Golden, Diane Arbus, female photographers who managed to capture the beauty and pain of everyday life. This is one of Nan Golden's most famous images from her book and slideshow, The Ballad of Sexual Dependency. I also took a lot of inspiration from Sophie Kahl's book, True Stories, both in format and material. I was intrigued by the idea of small, disparate moments and objects adding up to a larger, more unconscious narrative. I enjoy work that has layered meanings. As I set about documenting my life, I came across this quote from another photographer who played with text and image 30 years ago, Dwayne Michaels. Portraiture is essentially about vanity. We want to be told that we are in some way attractive, almost desirable still young and of value. We hope for flattery, and all the time we are looking for the wrong thing. We should want clues to our own truth. I began piecing together a narrative, heavily inspired by the idea of clues to my own truth, through collected images, objects, memories. I numbered these disparate pieces of text, one through 30, representing 30 days in a month, a cycle, alluding to 30 days of medication. There became a push-pull involved with pairing text and images like this. I wanted readers to linger on the combinations, letting their unconscious make the connections. One of the objects and characters I used was a mouse. The mouse in the story becomes a metaphor for a domestic disturbance. Here is this interloper ruining our cozy home, representing that ugly side of a relationship. I use the mouse as a narrative thread to tie the story together and add pacing and anticipation. And there really was a mouse. In real life, we had a mouse that lived in our apartment last fall. And in a strange story of life imitating art, shortly after my partner moved out, the mouse showed up dead of natural causes underneath my bookshelves. At first, I was horrified and screamed, but then it seemed so sweet and innocent that I immediately felt terrible. And I put a plastic box over it and this was in the middle of a snowstorm, and now I was just a crazy lady with a dead mouse in my house, so I decided that I was so connected to this thing that represented my dead relationship uh, that I wanted to have it taxidermy. So Fred is now downstairs in the thesis exhibit, and you can pet him if you are so interested. <coughs> Coupling explores intimacy within the context of a modern relationship. I focused on small domestic details and individual objects to inform the characters. This was the first relationship both my partner and I had been in since being divorced. There is this internal pressure to make everything work out, to submit to the larger cultural expectations of what a couple should look like, to avoid failure. After my marriage ended and I started dating new people, I realized how difficult it was to find authenticity. We all perform our lives as mother, husband, lover. What happens when the mask of the performer is dropped to reveal the true self below? You see myself as the photographer forever documenting, and my partner as the musician forever performing. I gathered these clues to understand why was I even trying coupling once again? What makes us humans crave close intimacy, even when it could ultimately hurt us? 
Why did we bother to form relationships at all? I set out to show a really honest portrait of a deeply flawed coupling. I knew from the beginning that coupling had to be a book, an object that you could hold in your hand, an intimate experience of being invited to some, into someone else's home. Ultimately, the full text of the book is not online. I really believe you need the experience of picking up the book, the images, small, little windows into the next room. In this chaotic, internet-ruled world where attention spans are plummeting, I sought my audience, sought to force my audience to slow down. That same drive for slowness also informed the other side of my thesis, Untitled Intimacy Project is an eight minute looped video experience that is a documentary set to original music. This story really grew out of the same material from the book with an emphasis on non-linear storytelling. I collected videos over a period of six to nine months. I would watch these collected videos and they would show something ugly. And still later I watched them and they showed something beautiful. And each time I watch them, something else is revealed to me. Untitled Intimacy Project combines the truth of documentary footage with the artifice of editing to produce something between fiction and reality that speaks to the overall human truths of loneliness and the deep desire for connection. I wanted to name it that because I see this portion of my thesis continuing to grow. I shoot video all the time. Film gives you the power to replay a moment totally enveloping you in the memory. The video becomes an ephemeral experience and it went through at least 15 different cuts over the last eight months, adding music or adding dialogue, then taking it away. For me, music is tied so closely to memory and emotion, and ultimately I went back to the original intention, slow, dreamy, beautiful, painful truth. When I was in my failing marriage, I spent many years in a depressed fog, looking out at everyone on social media who seemed so happy, in this time of struggle, I couldn't find anyone to connect with. It is this drive for connection, for truth amidst difficult circumstances, that ultimately informs my work the most. There is so much empowerment to be found in talking about the things rather not seen, the struggles that society often turns a blind eye towards. In this day and age, more than ever, we need empathy. We need basic human connection just to survive. I continue to make work that shows the things rather not seen. The more we share online, it seems, the further away from the truth we really are. And I wonder, what impact is this perpetual performing having on our real lives? What is more real, our online selves or the people we portray in our lives? I found this quote by writer and curator Charlotte Cotton particularly applicable. Social media has proven itself as the perfect medium for contradictions. It allows us to preempt our fear of intimacy through exhibitionism, while answering our desire to live outside of a real experience by turning into a voyeur of others' lives. I invite you, my dear audience, to be a voyeur of my story, to watch real intimacy in a modern relationship in all of its messy permutations, and perhaps to remind you to search for the beauty amidst the pain and share in a truthful human experience. Thank you. Um, so I am the rare person, I think, in that I pitched a totally different story last summer <laughs> for my thesis project, but I ultimately think that I managed to encapsulate some of the same character because I think I've always done art about myself. So in a way, I think building that character last summer did sort of help to build this character of my real life. Um, and with many meetings with Nathan to then try to scope out this story um, and it really grew from a lot of the same feelings, I think, that were in the original piece. Yeah, so that was something else that I really wanted people to think about, is there's definitely aspects of the video that feel like performance. And I guess playing with that idea of, yeah, performing our lives, and I'm definitely curating still what I want you to see. But I guess what I want people to see, to me, feels more truthful than like what other people would see, if that makes sense. <laughs> I am still working on that, <laughs> but we are still in contact and we talk every day and we're pretty much, depending on the day we're together. So. <laughs> 
So he's also an artist, he's a mu musician, and it's all his original music that's in the video downstairs um, that you heard for a second with the drumming. That seemed a little overwhelming for, <laughs> for everybody though. Um, so he has seen it all the way from the beginning, and I think it became really important to our relationship even to make art together, and that was exciting. So although he, I think he only told me at the very end that he definitely wanted one thing removed from the book, um, everything else he's been totally okay with, and I've given him multiple times, hey, do you want this removed, do you not? And he leaves it up to the artist. Granted, he would never let me edit, edit any of his music, so. <laughs> I think a big part of it too was finally living with somebody else who was just as vulnerable and also just as artistic to really see like the merits of turning the camera around. Um, and also meeting my mentor because this is the kind of work that she does and the kind of work that I've always wanted to do. So, I mean, there was definitely probably a struggle of, you know, 500 really bad selfie type photos. <laughs> I will admit it. Um, but then I think I did start to see a lot of my self, both the good and bad, reflected. So uh, I would look back, especially at the videos, and initially I thought, wow, he's just a horrible person. And then I looked back and thought, wow, I was actually kind of mean right there. <laughs> so it was just a good way to kind of face aspects about yourself that aren't so savory.